You guys, I went to the South Florida Frog Tail and I love the dress that I created. I used Simplicity 8544. And I did a sew along behind the scenes for you guys. So if that's some content that you would like to see of the pattern review and the sew along, please continue to watch. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my South Florida Frog Tail dress. Now, you're gonna get all, you have all the deets. <laughs> you're gonna get all the details of what it was like attending the second South Florida Frog Tail that was in Fort Lauderdale, Florida over the weekend. However, I figured you guys were gonna be like, Rochelle, could you show us how you created that dress? Now, first things first, I'm gonna tell you that this is a out of print pattern, but I did do behind the scenes showing you guys how to put it together in a sew along form, okay? So it is a sew along more like a sew along instead of a watch me sew. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today, all right? But if you are new to the channel, welcome. Hello, ciao, guten tag, aloha, hola, konnichiwa, wagwan, samanani, salon, bonjour, tarve. If you're returning, you guys know what to do. A quick snack, something to drink. You won't need your notebook unless you are just writing down details of what I give for this pattern review. Cause you guys know this pattern review is going to be short, sweet, and to the point. So I can get you over to the sew along. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so this is Simplicity 8544. And in terms of the pattern description, for me, I, I did view D, so I'm just gonna get my own because there's not necessarily a pattern description, but this is basically a Mrs. dress with the neckline, sleeve, and fabric variation. So because I did view D, I'm just gonna say that this is a, a dress with an overlay. You have front and back facing, a zipper in the back, and then you have cuff and buttons that you're gonna put onto the cuffs. Outside of that, it is a nice, gorgeous dress. All right, <laughs> that is my quick and simple pattern description for you. Let's talk about the notions used. So in terms of the notions for view D, the, the view that I did, you're going to need a 22 inch invisible zipper and four buttons. Now my buttons, I believe was three fourth inch buttons, but according to the back of the envelope, you need four half inch buttons. I used what was in my stash that I could get rid of. It was only four buttons left, so I used it and it was three fourths of an inch. And I actually like the bigger ones instead of the half an inch button. And just so you know, I didn't have navy blue buttons. So that's why we went with black. All right, <laughs> use what you got to get what you want. Let's talk about fabric. So in terms of fabric, I used a um, satin fabric. So it was a navy satin fabric from Joann's. That's the fabric that I used for this dress. Let's talk pattern pieces. So in terms of the pattern pieces, um, I don't know how many pattern pieces, let me check. So I used pattern piece number two, the back, pattern piece number eight, the back facing, pattern piece number nine was the front, pattern piece number 12, the front facing, pattern piece number 15, the shoulder strap, 16, the front overlay and sleeve, and then 17, the back overlay and sleeve. So it was a total of, and pattern piece number 18 to cuff. So it was a total of eight pattern pieces in order to construct this dress. Now, this dress took me three days to do. I did different steps each night <laughs> after work. Now, I'm gonna say this is a Diana from 26 by Diana. She made me do it. Cause let's just say this. When I told her I don't have no time to create a new dress, I'm just gonna wear something out of my stash. She was just like, Rochelle, no you're not girlfriend. You sew very fast. I don't care if it's going to be late night, early morning, get it done. Okay, I was like, damn, my mama just told me you better shop around, right? But <laughs> at the same time, when she said that, I was just like, I cannot let Diana down simply because she's up late nights, early mornings, on Saturdays, getting her corset done. I gotta come through. So I did exactly in true fashion what Rochelle would do. No excuses, just do what you need to do, right? So I literally planned to do have three days and I just said, 
about an hour, hour and a half max each day. And I got it done. I was done with the dress. I think I started on a Sunday. I was done Tuesday night into Wednesday. Okay. I think the only thing I had left to do was like the finishing touches of the buttons and the zipper and the hem. Outside of that, this is literally a one day sew, really two if you really want to be technical if you sew all day. But because I don't have that pleasure or I don't have that time, I should say, to sew all day because, you know, working, cooking, all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, so it took me almost three days to do, all right? Let's talk about pattern sizing. So in terms of pattern sizing, this pattern I think comes in two envelopes, six to 14 and 16 to 22 on the second pattern envelope. Now I'm looking at the pack, the pattern envelope, but it like, I have the six through 14 on my envelope, but the second envelope is either 14 to 22 or 16 to 22. The size that I cut was a size 14, but hear me out. <laughs> I have made this dress before in a black and this is the one that I did. You see in the black. So I did it this time in view D, the navy blue. But one thing I will mention is if I had this pattern again, I would have cut a size 16 to alleviate having a size up, not only at the bust, I sized up the bust, the waist, and the hips, okay? So I sized up all of it in order to fit, and it fit like a glove, y'all. A glove, all right? Let's talk about modifications. Did I make any modifications? Nope, I didn't make any modifications to this pattern. There was no need to, all right? Did it look like the pattern or the drawing on the pattern envelope? Absolutely. I think for me, um, once I put it on and everything, I like the dress, don't get me wrong. I think the overlay section, I think it's great and all, but I think for me, I would have done something fancier with the overlay, all right? So it's, I could have said this in the likes and dislike, but I didn't make any modifications to the pattern. Are the instructions easy to follow? Yes, they are, but I didn't really use them. <laughs> I didn't really use the instructions because I just kind of like looked at the picture and just kind of like did it my own way. You guys know how I do. But yes, the instructions are easy to follow. Likes and dislikes. Well, I already told you kind of like one dislike was like, I feel like the overlay could have been either a little bit longer or removed, but I like the details of the sleeve. So that's why I did the portion with the overlay. But other than that, there's no dislike, all love, all right? Any first time experiences? The only first time experience that I have was doing the overlay with the sleeve. I have never done that, so it was the first time. But other than that, there's no um, first time experiences whatsoever. One thing I will mention is um, that the underarms, it's bias. You have to use bias tape, and I created my own bias tape for that, which was a previous project, some scrap fabric. I tell you guys, these scrap fabrics, you can always use as bias tape, all right? Let's talk about, would I sew this pattern again? Absolutely, <laughs> I would definitely sew this pattern again. It's easy to sew, definitely. I would sew this pattern again. Any type of recommendations? Yes, I recommend this pattern if you can find this pattern because now there is a true sew along for this pattern if you're ever interested in doing this pattern as well, all right? What would I give this pattern? I'm gonna rate this pattern a four out of five for the dress that I created. I like it, um, love it as well. I would do it again, but I'm just gonna rate it as a four out of five for my likability, all right? Well, that's it for the pattern review. I hope you enjoy, so stay tuned so we can get over to the sew along. Let's go ahead and do it. Hey you guys, so I am here to show you behind the scenes of my South Florida Frock Tail dress i'm going to be kind of doing kind of like a sew with me or watch me sew but it's kind of like a sew along i guess whatever you want to call it but what i'm working on is simplicity 8544 um i am doing view d in a satin for south florida frock tails this year i went last year so i'm going back this year for the second annual uh south florida frock tail with joanna and diana 
Um, I'll put their handles up on the screen so you're able to follow them on Instagram as well as the South Florida Frocktail page if you are looking for more details about it. If you're not going this year, if they have it next year, I advise you to go. All right, so let's talk about the pattern pieces that you will need. Once again, the pattern that I'm using is Simplicity 8544. I believe it's sold out, but you can find it on eBay, Etsy, or Amazon. I have done this pattern before, but I did view C before. Um, I have showed it many of times in the um in this fabric it was a black fabric with some purple-ish um flowers or whatnot on it you guys have seen it but i have not photographing it but i did take a couple of pictures so i'll put one or two up on the screen so you're able to see that as well so we're doing this one today view d so let's talk about the pattern pieces you will need in order to get started you only need eight pattern pieces you need pattern piece two eight nine twelve 15, 16, 17, and 18. So um, I am using 54 inch satin fabric for this one. No, not crepe back satin. It's just satin fabric. So it's super slippery <laughs> um, is what I have to work with. So I'll be sewing, I will be sewing a lot slower this time around. So the only pattern piece that I need to cut wrong sides up is pattern piece number 16 and Pattern piece number 12, all right? So now this is a super simple dress to make, to be honest with you. There's only 12 steps to doing this, but like I said, I have done view C before, so a lot of the instructions are the same from previously. So what I'm gonna start off doing is doing my stay stitch. So I'm gonna do this in like two to three days. So this is day number one. Today's date is Sunday, April 7th. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna be stay stitching the front, the back, the front overlay and the sleeves and then I, and the back overlay as well and the back sleeve. So pattern piece nine, two, 16 and 17, I'm gonna stay stitch those, I already done that. Um, I'm gonna make the darts, which I have already made the darts in this garment. So what I'm gonna start doing is going ahead and stitch up the front and the back at the side seams. I'm gonna um, do my bias tape. So I made my own bias tape, which is basically some scraps from my stash when I did McCall's, I think it was McCall's 8257. I'll put the picture up on the screen so you're able to see that um, where I had some uh, side boob issues, okay? If you know, you know. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. Um, I'm gonna be doing the shoulder straps in step three, the shoulder straps, put on the bias tape, and then understitch that. And then if I have a little bit of time because I'm only working with one hour today, I'm gonna um, start working on the overlay uh, portion where I'm gonna gather, create a narrow hem and all that good stuff. And then tomorrow I'll start working on the sleeves and the cuffs. And then the last day I'm gonna do all my finishing. So I should be done with this roughly by Wednesday, but no later than Thursday. My goal is to have this done by Wednesday. I will put each day up on the screen as I'm doing it. So what I'm going to start doing is go ahead and work on the side seams now. All right. So now before I get started with sewing up the side seams, let me show you the pattern pieces and the pieces that you need to cut. Okay. So it's in no particular order. I have some of it already done, but this is pattern piece number 17, which is the back overlay and sleeve for view D. What I'm cutting out, you need to cut two of fabric for that. You also need pattern piece number 16, which this one you should have cut with the wrong side of your fabric up on the uh, wrong side up, all right? And cut all the way around. And you also needed to cut on the fold for pattern piece number 16. This is your front overlay and sleeve. You need to cut one on the fold of fabric, okay? All right, so the next piece that you need is pattern piece number two, which is your back. You need to cut two of fabric. And now because I'm doing view D, I only needed to cut two of fabric. Now, if you notice, you see a lot of white paper because I had to size up at the waist and the hips because when I did this pattern, I was a little smaller than what I am right now. Um, I sized up the waist. I cut a size 14 for this pattern before. The pattern is sewed out, so I had to size up at the waist because my 
my waist grew one inch from what this pattern is, okay? So a size 14 was like a 34, 35, I think. And I wanted a little bit more room to accompany the waist and the hips, so I sized it up by an inch. Now, if I need to take it in, that's four inches that I'm adding to the waist, but I want it to be a, a sleek finish from waist all the way down to the hips because I have to size up the hips by two inches, okay? So, actually, I think it was four inches, to be honest with you, because um, with the hips, when I add both of the numbers together, it gave me like a 42 inch hip. My hips is a 46 right now, so I had to size it up by four inches, giving me a 46, but I also added two inches for ease. So the hips is sized all the way up to a 48 to give me some ease for movement, all right? Just to give you that. So this is pattern piece number two. I cut two of fabric. There's a zipper that's gonna be going in the back, so make sure you transfer all your notches as well. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number nine, which is the front. You need to cut one on the fold of fabric there. I also went ahead and sized up at the waist and the hips for that as well. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 18. You need to cut four of fabric and interface two for the cuffs, all right? Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 12, which is the front facing. You need to cut one on the fold of fabric and also interface the uh, piece. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number eight, which is the back facing. You need to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. And the last pattern piece is pattern piece number 15, which is your shoulder strap. You need to cut two of fabric and also interface two. So those are all the pattern pieces that you need in order to construct this lovely dress for the South Florida Frocktail. So let's go ahead and get into the sewing. Now, one thing I'm not going to do, I'm going to walk you through how to create this dress, but I'm not going to go to the sewing. I'm not going to show the sewing machine simply because this is something I have to get done quick, but I do want to show you kind of like behind the scenes. So I'm going to kind of take you on a journey as if I'm doing it as a sew along. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I did um, all of my stay stitching and I went ahead and did my dart. So we're gonna start working on the side seam. So if you have not stay stitched, go ahead and stay stitched and then go ahead and do your dart in the front pattern piece, which is pattern piece number two, and then join me here to sew up the side seam. So let's go ahead and get it. All right, you guys, so I went ahead and did my darts. I stay stitched the front. This is my front pattern piece. Now on my back pattern piece, I went ahead and searched the portion that's going to be the zipper. Let me turn it so you guys could see this. So this is my center back. Okay, so I went ahead and searched that area because the zipper will stop right here, about a 22 inch zipper, all right? So I did that on both uh, pattern piece, the back pattern piece, this is the other back pattern piece right here, same thing. So what I'm gonna do is attach front to back at the side seam. So this is my front, I'm gonna turn it to the side so you're able to see this. All right, so I'm turning it to the side. Now I'm going to grab my back pattern piece and with right sides together, I'm gonna to match up the notches and also the side seams. Now make sure you know that that portion that's, um, that you search the center back of your back piece it's for your zipper, so that should be in the center, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is match up my notch that's right here, and I'm gonna pin all the way down, all right? So I'm gonna match up that notch and pin. Make sure your dart is pressed down. Your, your darts in the front of your pattern piece is pressed down towards the dress instead of up towards the bodice, I guess, well, you could call it a bodice, but you want the darts to be pressed down instead of up, okay? So now I'm gonna finish pinning, I'm gonna pin at the bottom and then pin all the way up my dress, all right? So go ahead and pin the side seams now. Now that I have it pinned using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular lit stitch, Back, I'm gonna start at the hem, I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and then sew all the way up to the end and back stitch at the end, all right? Once I do that, I'm gonna finish off the side seam. You're gonna do that to the other side as well. 
Go ahead and stitch both side seams together now. All right, so now that I have my side seams done, I completely finished my side seam off. That's what you're seeing right here through the camera. The next thing, I did that on both sides. So the next thing I need to work on is the shoulder strap. So this is uh, pattern piece number 15. I did one side already. Now, before you ask what type of uh, fusible interfacing I am using, I'm just gonna show you to the camera right here. It is SK135 Sheer Knit. It's for specialty apparel fusible um, garments like this. This is a specialty fabric. So that's why I'm using it. It acts like more like a knit fusible interfacing. So if you are looking for this one, you could get it from Joann's. I don't remember how much I paid for it because I get all of my interfacing in a bulk. But if you missed my Amazon video on how I purchase in bulk from Amazon, I'm not saying that you can get this one from Amazon because I haven't purchased any interfacing from Amazon, but I did get this one from Joann's and you could get it from Joann's as well. All right. But this is SK135 Sheer Knit Specialty Apparel Fabric, and I'll link to it in the description box below. All right. So I did one side. Now, um, what I would do if I were you, I wouldn't even worry about pressing this open or anything because it's going to be bias tape around this armhole. But what I did is I'm going to show you what I did on the other side. So I'm just going to move this off to the side real quick. Grab pattern piece number 15, which is your shoulder strap for view D. And what I did was I went ahead and fused the wrong side of the shoulder strap. After I fused the wrong side of the sh shoulder strap, I finished off the bottom edge, okay, with just my serger. Now, what I'm gonna do is there's two notches for the back, one notch for the front. And what you're gonna do now, you're gonna be looking at this. The front is on the table, the back is right here. You have your two notches, one notch. So you're going to basically pen the one notch first is what I did. I lined up my one notch. So you want to make sure that the end is flushed. Okay. So you want to pin at the very top. You want to pin at that notch and the bottom. If you need extra pins, by all means, add extra pins where you need them. Okay. So I'm just going to pin right here and then I'm going to add one more pin. All right. Now you can, all you're going to do is base this at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You do not need to do five eighths of an inch. You could do three eighths of an inch, but I like to do multiple things at the same time to cut down on running back and forth to the sewing machine, but I'm going to go ahead and put on the back. So with right sides together, you have a double notch right there. Same thing. Now, you know, my back is kind of a uh, surge. So you want to make sure you find those notches for the back. All right. And you're going to do the same thing. Okay. For the back, you see how you have that three, not search, do not do the search portion, the unsearch portion where you have that triple, I'm sorry, the double notch. So you want to line both of those up just like so, and you're going to pin at that double notch, pin at the top and then pin along that edge. Okay. So I'm just going to pin all the way across. Put one more pin there and then using three eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to backstitch. Actually, when you baste, you don't have to backstitch, but I'm going to do so to secure my stitch. So I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and at the end on both. All right. So go ahead and do that. Now, make sure you are only doing the front and the back just across. All right. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the shoulder strapped on on both sides, I tried it on and it's gonna fit perfectly. Yes, yes, yes. That's why when you short on time, you pick a pattern you already have done before, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is right here, this is the underarm seams or whatever you wanna call it, underarm. You're going to use bias tape to finish off this area, all right? front to back. So I would just want to show you this. So let me turn it right side out. All right. You're going to finish all of this. All right. All of it. All right. With your, so if you turn it right side, 
right side. You're going to finish all of that under arm seam. Okay. So you're going to do that. So I'm going to do like, if you turn it like this, let me make sure that it's on the right side. So I think there we go. All right. I'm sorry about that y'all, but you want to make sure that you don't have any bumping. So I'm going to uh, check this out again because for some reason it's not laying the way I want it to lay like the other one. So I'm going to um, definitely make sure that this is on the right way for this one. Okay. But I'm just going to show you guys this one. I'm going to redo this side because it's not laying the way that I need it to lay for this back. And I'm going to correct that real quick because it's just basted. it. So I'm going to show you on this side because this one needs to be laid like this. Okay. So all you're going to do is take your single full bias tape. I made mine. All right. And all you're going to do is you're going to basically, um, I'm just going to open up one side. I'm going to sew all the way around. So I'm just going to start kind of like right here. I'm just gonna kind of like sew this down at probably like three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once I do that, I'm gonna trim it down and then press this in like this and then fold it over to conceal it all the way around, all right? So add your bias tape all the way around both arm holds now, all right? And then that's gonna be the end of day number one. I'll show you day number two tomorrow when we start working on those sleeves, y'all. So tomorrow I'm going to be working on the sleeves and the cuffs. Um, if I have time, I'll, I should be able to finish the entire thing, but we will see because I still have a zipper to do as well in the front overlay. All right. So tomorrow is going to be more of like the sleeves, the cuffs, and possibly the zipper in the back as well. All right. So good night for tonight. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with some more uh, behind the scene of issues. All right. Stay tuned. All right, so now that I am completely done doing the bias tape around the armhole, I'm gonna go ahead and move this off to the side. And the next thing I'm gonna work on is the overlay. So you guys, this is day number two. I finished day number one. So now we are in day number two. Oh, welcome to day number two. So today is April the 8th when you are seeing this well when you see this is past the eighth but today is the eighth on my time all right so what we're going to do is grab your back and front overlay and sleeves so what i'm going to do is take my white pencil and mark the back overlay so i grabbed my white chalk and the reason why i need to mark it is because it looked like the same thing on the same side uh, between both of them so i'm just gonna write 17 back and then the other one is on the front. Now, just remember that the back you needed to cut two. And then the one for the front you have um, cut on the fold. So that one should be cut on the fold. So I'm just going to write 16 front. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach front to back at the shoulder seam. Okay. So I'm going to open this and it's going to look really, 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 really long. And I'm going to use this side. This is the shoulder seam right here. And what I'm gonna do is with right sides together, I'm gonna take one of my back, put it on my front, right sides together, and I'm going to stitch, starting at the notch and stitch all the way across, okay? So let me pin here and then I'm just gonna stitch all the way across the shoulder seam. So go ahead and Pin your shoulder seams together now. All right, so now that I have the shoulder seam pinned together front to back using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch, I'm gonna start at the hem. I'm gonna back stitch at the hem and then sew all the way across and back stitch right here by the shoulder seam. Once you do that, Finish off your uh, seam allowance. Now, if you want to press it open, I would advise you to search both side seams separately, but I'm going to sew my serge mines together in one and then press my seam allowance towards the back and top stitch just to give it that detail. All right, so go ahead and do both of your shoulder seams together now. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the 
shoulder seams done, this is what it looks like. I went ahead and surged. I press my seam allowance towards the back. So this is the front. That's why you see front here, if you could see that. Um, it says front here, this is the back. So I press the seam allowance towards the back, okay? So this is what it's looked like. This is the wrong side facing up on the camera. So the next thing we're gonna do is narrow hem. So what you're going to do is you're gonna narrow hem the top, the, the bottom right here, and then the other. So these are underarms, the under uh, end seam or underarm seams, all right? So in the bottom. So you're going, you're going to narrow him this top portion right here. Let me scoot it down so you can see this top portion right here, this portion right here, leave the hem right here untouched. And then this portion right here. Okay. So you're going to narrow him all of that. So the top portion on both the top portion right here, the side seam right here, or underarm seams, I should say, and then this portion right here. Now, when you under when you do that, you're going to, let me bring the instructions so you can see what I'm talking about. So looking at the instructions, you really can't see this portion right here that is the front where you're going to have this all the way across. So you wanna narrow him all the way across, this top portion right here in this bottom. You're gonna leave the portion that's going to become the hem of your sleeve undone because that's where you're gonna gather and the cuff is gonna sit on that uh, portion right there, okay? So go ahead and narrow hem. So basically I'm gonna create a basting stitch at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance across the top. So 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance then I'm gonna to press to that line, okay? And then press again to encase it just like that and stitch on the right side. So that's how I'm gonna do my narrow hem, all right? So go ahead and do your narrow hem on um, the front and back overlay now. All right, so I did the overlay. Let me, okay, so this is the overlay. This is what it looks like, okay? So let me, bring it down so you can see it. So I have the top narrow hemmed. I have this portion right here, um, narrow hemmed as well. And then I have the entire bottom portion overlay. Then right here where the cuff, this is where the cuff's gonna be. You should have created two rows of gathering stitches, which is what I did, all right? Now the next step, I'm so sorry, you guys, my allergies is acting up, um, but I'm gonna get through this. So the next step is the cuffs, okay? So I did one cuff just to kind of show you because this is day number two and this is the end of day number two, um, but I just wanted to put one on because you guys know I'll kind of like work with one side and then I do the other side on camera when I'm filming any type of sew alongs or anything like that. So. This one is already done. This is the cuff, it's looking nice. So the only thing I have to do to this one is I'll do this once I put the other cuff on, create my buttonholes and attach my button. So it's gonna go essentially like this, okay? That's what it's gonna look. So basically all of this is going to be open at the bottom, okay? So that's that. And the only thing I have left to do tomorrow on day number three, I'm going to attach the other cuff. I have my front and back facing to do, pattern piece number eight, pattern piece number 12, and of course the cuff is pattern piece number 18. This is all for tomorrow, what I'll be doing to finish it up. It'll be Wednesday before the event, okay? So um, that's what I have left to do, which would be on this side, the cuff. Then I'm going to attach this entire overlay piece to the dress, put it in the zipper, and instead of me hemming it tomorrow, I'm gonna wait 24 hours and hem on Thursday. Now the dress is currently hanging right now, so I could necessarily, yeah, actually I can hem it tomorrow um, because the dress is hanging right now for everything to fall in place, all right? 
So that's what I have going on for day number three. So stay tuned for tomorrow, day three, as we wrap this road to South Florida Frocktail dress up. Once again, the pattern is Simplicity 8544. This one right here. And we are finishing up this one for the South Florida Frocktail tomorrow. All right. Talk to you tomorrow. Peace. Hey, you guys, we are back and this is day number three. Today is April the 9th. If you can see that in my watch, it's April 9th. It is now 9.50 p.m. at night, okay? <laughs> but we gonna get some, we're gonna make some progress. This is pretty much gonna be the last night. So just to first recap what I did yesterday, I worked on the over, lay and made one cuff. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna work on the other cuff on this side. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do that, which I kind of already did it. And then um, I'm gonna attach the overlay to the dress and work on the facing. So that's all that's left to do today. Um, and then I'll at, do the zipper or whatever at a different time in a clip, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and grab pattern piece number 18. Now just remind you that pattern piece number 18, you're going to have two, one that's interface and one that's not interface. The non-interface one is your facing. This one is considered your cuff. The one that's interface is considered your cuff. The one that's not interface is considered your facing. So what you're gonna do is fold the um, the facing side, five eighths of an inch. I made a basin stitch, five eighths of an inch seam allowance. I pressed it into that five eighths of an inch seam allowance and trimmed it down. You're going to do that on the notch side. So you have a notch right here. You're going to make sure that you create that five eighths of an inch seam allowance on the portion that has the notch, trim it down. And then what you have is on the unnotch edge, that's where you do not have any notches. You're gonna sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, pin your facing to your cuff, then using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and go ahead and sew using a regular length stitch, all right? So go ahead and do that now, and then trim it down, and then we're going to understitch on the facing. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it, have the cuff sewn onto the facing, the next thing you wanna do is press your seam allowance towards the facing, that is the un-interface um, side. And then on the right side, making sure that the seam allowance is pressed towards the facing piece, you're going to understitch. Understitch is done at a fourth of an inch seam allowance, so you're just gonna understitch on the facing side, all right? So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the cuff under stitch, it's looking real good, just like that. Move that out off to the side real quick, grab your overlay. And what we're gonna do is we're going to match the overlay to the cuff. So what you wanna do is you have two notches on the portion that's interface. And what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're gonna match up the notches like you see here. Yes, it's going to extend a little bit and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to make sure I'm able to see my notch just like that. And I'm gonna pin my notch where the notch is on the overlay, okay? And then go ahead and pin. Now I'm going to pin this way just for the sake of pinning at the moment, but I'm gonna make sure that I have it pinned on the side where my uh, gathering stitches are, okay? So I'm gonna pin right here, all right? Now I'm going to work from the side where my gathering is. And I'm just going to pull out, basically make sure that the overlay fits onto the um, cuffs. So just make sure you are basically having your gathers even all the way across, okay? And then pin where you can. So I'm just gonna pin on this side like I just mentioned, and I'm gonna pin all the way across, making sure that I have it gathered, but you don't want it bunched up. So go ahead and make sure you are horning in on your gathers, but also make sure 
that it's flat and it's even all the way across. So go ahead and pin your overlay onto your cuff now. All right, so now that I have it pinned all the way across using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and back stitch at the end, go ahead and sew across your overlay now. Go ahead and do that now, and then you're gonna trim it down and press the seam allowance up towards your cuff, which is the interface side. So go ahead and do that. All right, so now that I have the cuff, it looks like this, the cuff onto the overlay, the next thing you want to do is start forming your cuff. So you're going to take this portion that is the facing and is still pressed under, and you're gonna take this portion that's pretty much pressed under, and you're going to take it and fold it onto itself like this to form a cuff. Now make sure this facing edge is pressed under. I'm gonna bring it up so you can see just like this and make sure the bottom is also pressed under. And you're going to pin, all right? So I'm just going to pin just like this. And I'm gonna pin this entire section right here, okay? So I'm gonna put a pin here and then put a pin at the very top. Now I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. Now, yes, it will extend. It is perfectly fine that it is extending like that, okay? So just make sure that, like I mentioned, this portion right here is pressed under, and then you go take the other portion and make sure that it is even, and both of them are pressed under. Now, I my fabric is satin, so it is a little on the slippery side, but you just have to make sure you go slow. If you have never worked with satin, I would advise you to really take your time and go slow when sewing with slippery fabrics, okay? And then I'm gonna pin right here as well. Now, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and there's a dot. The dot starts here. So I'm gonna start at this dot and it should be roughly probably about an inch. I'm not sure. I'm just gonna measure it out on my cutting table and it looks to be about an inch and a quarter from my uh, cutting mat, all right? So about an inch and a quarter. So you go start here and then sew all the way down. Now I'm saying about an inch and a quarter, but you're gonna start at that dot that you have. Now mine's is white and it's right here. Let me bring it up so you can see it. Right here, I'm just gonna sew using that dot as a guide all the way across, all right? And then on the other side where it's not as long, you're gonna sew from that dot down, which should be 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, all right? So go ahead and sew both of those down now. All right, so now that I am done with the cuffs, I'm just, it's supposed to go like this. I'm just going to definitely put my, I'm gonna make my buttonholes and buttons later. So I'm just gonna put a pen right here and on both sides to do that. I will do that off camera, but you can go ahead and do your buttonholes and your buttons, or you can wait until the end like I'm going to be doing and just do that after you complete everything else. It's not, I mean, it's in the instructions to do it now, but you could definitely wait and do it last, like I will be doing um, when everything is pretty much done, all right? So I'm just gonna put my pens there and make my buttonholes later. Every machine is different in terms of making buttonholes, so that's why I don't do buttonholes on camera, but this is where you're, uh, button holes and buttons are going to go, all right? So now grab your dress. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach our overlay to our dress at the neck edge. So this is my dress on the table and I'm gonna grab my overlay. Now, normally we do right sides together, but for this overlay, we are not doing right sides together. We're doing the wrong side of the overlay to the right side of the dress. So if you look at the picture, you can see how this is going to look, okay? And then what we're going to do is match up the shoulders. Uh, and basically you're gonna match up the notches and the shoulders and pin all the way around. So I'm just gonna pin right here. You're going to have some notches as well. Make sure you match up your notches. But I am just pinning right there for just a second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up 
this notch right here to this notch right here. Now, one thing I wanna mention is you will have about five eighths of an inch that the overlay is not going to go all the way to the back because you have a zipper right there. So make sure you match up your notches and yes, the overlay will not fit all the way to the back. And the reason why, like I just mentioned, is you will have a zipper. So you need to match up that notch that you have on both sides and then you're going to pin the rest of the um, dress, okay? So after you do that, what you wanna do is pin the rest of the overlay to the dress, all right? Now make sure that you have your, um, where you have your, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this top part off because that's just extending, which is my bias tape, okay? So I'm gonna cut that and then I'm going to pin. One thing I wanna make sure to note is that you make sure that your um, bias tape is on, on everything is lined up correctly. The seam allowance is pressed to the right, the uh, back portion of your garment, okay? So I'm gonna pin the neck edge all the way around the neck, the overlay to the dress at the neck edge all the way around. So go ahead and do that now. Now, one thing I wanna mention is on this side, you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're going to pin at that notch. It's not going to go all the way to the back of the dress, like I just mentioned on the other side, but definitely make sure you pin it and then pin the rest of the overlay to the dress at the neck edge. So go ahead and pin all the way around now. All right, so now that I have the overlay pinned to the neck edge, all you're gonna do is base all the way across. Now I'm going to base using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance so I don't have to pick anything out, but you could base using whatever um, size that you want. So go ahead and base this overlay onto your dress now. All right, so now that I have the overlay attached at the neck edge, I basted it all the way around. It's looking good. The overlay is now onto my dress. The next step that we're gonna do is install our zipper. Now, I'm gonna say this um, like I have said before. Now, for me, when it comes to zippers, I do not do on camera, but I have so many videos that I have showed you guys how I install my zippers. Now, first thing I'm going to do is tell you to go ahead and finish off the center back seam. Now, because my dress is going to be pressed open, I went ahead and finished it from the top all the way to the bottom, but this portion that has the notch is where your zipper is going to stop, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin at that notch, and then I'm going to pin all the way up the center back of my dress. So go ahead and pin from the bottom at the hem all the way up now. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my center back pinned, I'm gonna start at the end using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch. I'm gonna back stitch at the hem, come all the way up to where I have these two pins at, which is the notch. I'm gonna back stitch at this notch. After I do that, now just remember regular length stitch from the hem to the notch. Once I get to the notch, I'm going to switch from a regular length stitch to a basting stitch and base from this notch all the way up. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do the zipper on camera because we have done many, many, many zippers on this channel. Um, you can always go to Simplicity, how, to, how Brittany J. Jones installed her invisible zippers. I have also showed you how to install invisible zippers on this channel as well. So you could go to any dress that requires an invisible zipper. I pretty much showed you how to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install my zipper and then I'll come back with 
putting on the facing and be finishing up with the final touches of this dress. All right, so let's go ahead and install our zipper and I'll come back and show you what's next when it comes to the front and the back facing. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my zipper in, it zips up with no issues whatsoever. Go ahead and put your dress off to the side and grab pattern piece number eight and 12 you're facing. All right, so grab pattern piece number eight and pattern piece number 12, your facing pieces, your front and your back facing. And what we're going to do is take your front facing, which is pattern piece number 12, just like this. So you're gonna grab pattern piece number eight and you're gonna make sure you match up the notches so with the right sides together, you're just going to match up the notches and pin. Now you should, just like you see on your pattern piece, make sure that the portion that does not have the notch is the back, like the center back, all right? So I'm gonna pin just like this. I'm gonna match up my notches, pin, pin across both sides, like you see me doing here. And we have, I have showed you how to put facing together before, so it's nothing, new <laughs> whatsoever. So just go ahead and pin, and I'm gonna put one more pin right here. Now what I'm gonna do is using five eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, so across both of your shoulder seams, and then you're gonna press your seam allowance open. After you do that, you're going to finish the bottom edge all the way across using I'm gonna do it using my serger, all right? So go ahead and stitch 5 eighths of an inch across, press it open, and then finish off the bottom edge with your serger, pinking shears, however you are finishing off the bottom. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the zipper completely done, I started doing my um, facing piece. I attached my facing piece I press the seam allowance open, what you see here. I finished off the bottom edge. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach the facing to the dress. Now we have done this many of times before, but I feel like you guys could do this, but I'll just kind of pin it for you. You could sew it yourself um, if you are doing this, but what you want to do is with right sides together, you want to pin at the shoulder seam, which would be match the shoulder seams on both sides. Go ahead and pin. And what you want to do is make sure that you have your um, facing over the overlay, okay? And you wanna make sure your facing is going, going all the way to the end. Okay, so you're going to place your facing over the zipper area like you see here. So make sure that it's not folded in like this. You wanna make sure that it's folded out just like this and pin your facing over the overlay. So you're gonna do what is called sandwich. You're gonna um, place, your, place your facing over your dress and overlay. Makes sense, it's weird how to say it, but you get it, just uh, place it with right sides together and pin all the way around. You're gonna make sure that this edge of your um, armhole, right, where you have the bias tape, make sure that you catch that in the seam allowance as well. So I'm just gonna repin mine to make sure that it's caught into that seam allowance as well. Then on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna match up the seam allowance and pin there and then pin all the way around the neck edge. So go ahead and pin your facing to your dress now. All right, so now that I have the neck edge pin, um, Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back, I'm gonna start in the center, back stitch in the center, so all the way to one side and then back stitch at the end. Then I'm gonna flip it over, still using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, start in the center and sew to the other end. Once I do that, I'm gonna trim it down, press the seam allowance towards the face seam, the interface side, 
and then understitch. Once again, understitch is done at about a fourth of an inch seam allowance, okay? After I do that, I'm going to sew, finish off my zipper area by sewing close to the zipper teeth, but not on the zipper teeth, okay? So I'm gonna do that as well on both sides, all right? And then turn your facing to the side, inside as well, your, uh, it should be finished off, all right? So once you do that, the only thing that's left to do, make sure you trim after you sew your neck, you could trim off your zipper teeth if you let it extend like I did um, before sewing this portion down to your zipper teeth, okay? So make sure you sew across, do not cut this top part off before you sew all the way across your neck area finish off the zipper back on both sides and then trim it off, okay? So after that, the only thing that's left for you to do is go ahead and stitch up your hem. I think the hem is one and one fourth on this dress. I think I am comfortable doing one inch because it's still gonna be a little on the short side. Above my knees, I forgot to go ahead and measure another inch, inch and a half in order to account for that, but it's okay because I want this to be a little sassy dress anyway, all right? So what I'm gonna do is just do a narrow hem, one inch hem, um, stitch that in place. I'm gonna actually hand sew the hem in place um, for this. So after I do my hem, I'm gonna go ahead and do my buttonholes and buttons. And yeah, you are all done with this dress. You will see this dress in photo for the South Florida Frocktail. I hope you enjoyed this sew along. All right, well that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if this video was educational, inspiring, and fun, please do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, also smash that notification bell so you are notified every time your girl uploads a new video. Also, if you make this dress, don't forget to tag me on Instagram or, or here on YouTube at rochelle.handmade.design. So I'll catch you in the next one. Until next time. They wanna know what I'm on. Got diamonds dancing on my neck. That is a vibe I'm on. Drip, way too lit. Who gon' check? You can tell me none. Boss mode in effect. And my money long. If you ain't talking money, don't talk to me. Uh, I be over here where the bosses be. Uh, pockets on thick, cause I eat my greens. Uh, way too hot, 3000 degrees. No pictures, please. Cameras flashing. I'm VIP. I'm a big deal. My life a movie. I'm the one they wanna be.